All right. Haven't shown you guys my backyard in a while. There's, that means there's probably a few reasons for that. We'll take a look at some of the uh, successes and failures here. All right. So that is, I think, my last early <laughs> potato that I've just kind of left. Oh, we'll get to that sometime. Some lettuce that got replanted, or uh, sorry, seeded in this box after the uh, after the spuds came out. It's doing awesome. We're harvesting off that until the front stuff is ready. The beets went in at the same time as did the carrots. So that was, I don't know. I'd have to look back on my videos. These two boxes I've planted with radishes. This will be the second time. Um, again, just so dry. It takes quite a bit to get that soil. I don't need that much soil for radishes, but uh, whatever. We'll give her a hack again. It uh, spit a wee little bit of rain last night for the first time in ever. Uh, the last of the last of the potato boxes, I've been watering them like crazy. This is the last plant that has any of the true potato seeds on them. I've collected probably six or seven from some of the plants up front and some of the ones that dropped off of here. So we're going to have some fun with that this winter, just for giggles. Don't eat those, by the way. They're poisonous. Just normal dying back. But check this guy out. Like, he barely even, she, he, she, whoever, barely even got affected by the hail. A couple of branches broken, but next to no pest damage when everything else has got these tiny little aphid holes in them. So I'm completely impressed with the Russian blue. I, I don't know what's underneath there, <laughs> mind you. And the green mountain that died back a long time ago. I just haven't, haven't bothered to get in there and lift that 150 pounds or whatever it is out of there. This was where the peas were at the start of the year. I yanked that trellis out and uh, transplanted a chamomile in there. Yeah, sometimes it looks like it's doing all right, and then other times it looks a little dry, just like everything else. Uh, I don't even know what to say about these. It, they're, they're okay. I mean... You gotta understand, I planted those by seeds probably, I don't know, second week of May. So you can see why I'm relatively underwhelmed by those. Uh, the next sowing I did was about a month later. So again, just nothing to get overly excited about. I mean, I, I like them pickling size anyway, but that's, that's a little ridiculous. Huh, oh well, whatever. You know, it's weird. I was chatting with, um, well, this was way back when I, I, one of my first backyard videos and uh, Judy had mentioned these big, huge Swedish aspens here and she was questioning the, uh, the sanity of my decision to put those things so close to the garden. And this is the low part of the area, low part of the yard rather, and then it comes up on a berm here and then down to the pond. So this is when, before we got sod and everything, I mean, I thought these things would be great for sucking up some moisture and the lake that was here disappeared and all that reasoning was grand. But, you know, at the end of the day, I've been thinking about it ever since Judy said it. And I think she's right because those roots, you know, when I popped, popped in uh, this um, spare tomato plant, I was still fighting through roots from this tree. And I mean, these are parsnips. And these have been in since oh, May-ish, end of May. You know, it just seems like everything over here the last couple of years has done fairly poorly. Those are turnips that have been in for like a hundred days. You know, like, I don't know. They seem bigger on the pictures to me, but mint's doing fine. But up to about the chives, over here seems kind of barren. So I think I'm going to, like I planted some elecampane there and some coastal mugwort. So those are... Uh, perennial medicinals those will come back so I think I'm gonna just turn this into a perennial zone and let the perennial roots fight it out because the annuals can't seem to deal with uh, those trees anyway um, the peppers I'm actually pretty happy with the peppers we had uh, well still have quite a few of them but I mean at the same time you know they're certainly not very tall right found these two little buggers hiding these cucumbers that I clearly oops Right. Now the game plan for this, I planted uh, from the far end of the bed to about here. I had uh, starts, cucumber starts that I started in the uh, in the garage. So I planted those there with the intent of those covering the entire fence. From here over, I planted cucumber seeds out of the pack. And two of those turned out to be squash. And 
I think that is the only other specimen that came up and that's as tall as it got. So my dreams of having this back fence covered, shattered this year. But you know, the nice thing about those two that I completely missed and they're not usable for eating or pickling, they're perfect for seed saving. So I am going to yank the seeds out of them. Might do a short little video on that if anyone's interested, but uh, gonna save those and uh, we'll see what the second generation in this garden does. This patty pan has been my pride and joy of the backyard. It's just so nice and green. We've had so many off of it and there are a boatload of coming. So pretty excited about that. Extra tomato doing nothing, extra tomato doing nothing. I'm actually uh, building another cold frame, which is going to go from the edge to about here. And that's going to be more for my seedlings at the start of the year but i'm going to be clearing this all out which is a shame because there's some more ron denise coming i think i might leave the ron denise and this tomato plant just in the cold frame and see how long i can get them going but everything back there is going to have to go all uh, these pepperoncinis aren't doing too too darn horrible whatsoever so i will be pickling those and i'll be cleaning this area up today um yeah, more with the failures. Like, these beds here are notorious for getting grass pressure from the city land. So I don't know why I thought it'd be a good idea to plant my three clumps of sweet grass in here. Because after about two months, I couldn't tell what was grass and what was grass. So I dug those up and repotted them up front. And this is the last of the roots, just letting die. And then what did I do? I went in here and I think about every four inches apart, I planted a bunch of kale uh to hopefully come up here and then i can maybe even transplant it into some of the cold frames or see how long it lasts what was going on in here oh another disappointment just to share um every year i plant beans all the way along the fence and every year you can't see out of here it's just cool and i planted beans twice that's about all that managed to live right there on this entire side and the other fence is is no better I'm trying to remember what was in here. Oh, was it onions? Yeah, I had onions in here. So I grabbed some spinach seed that I have saved. It's got to be three or four years old. Um, totally skeptical about it, but as you can see, there are tons coming up. So I'll probably have some in here and then replant some into the cold frames once I have some space. And then this is just, I don't know what it is. Man. Every time I plant seeds and it's a nice level surface of dirt, soil, what have you, that, that is roll around territory for the cats so i'm just putting these on until the plants get a little bit bigger here's some hail damage still on my horseradish i mean it looks like it's alive you know what i mean but uh whatever we'll see how she does next year i'm not harvesting any from these three plants this year uh blue vervain which uh is a medicinal and i'm actually taking something for bronchial and lungs it's a, a herbal tea and blue vervain's in it and, it's a pretty tasty tea. I will be dehydrating more of you, sir. Sweet peas don't do very well in pots. Um, clearly their root system needs to be accessed a little bit more than what I'm giving them there. Those have been in for two and a half, three months. None of the, oh, there you go. There's a specimen of my beans. And again, planted twice. First time came up like absolute crap. And then uh, the second time, uh, the hail got them. So, I don't know. A little bit of Swiss chard. We're letting some radishes go to seed here. I watched Sir Jim from the Midwest Gardener collecting these. It was a year or two old video, but I'm pretty sure the principle still applies. So kind of excited to see what we get out of that. Uh, more sweet peas. Again, these carrots have been in for, for months. So whatever, pickling size. Gonna be drying the rosemary here at the end of the year. There's no way that overwinters. A um, Couple of volunteer uh, sunflowers. This was a hodgepodge bed. It was beets up front carrots and then beans up back well, obviously beans in there as well oh i think we have one purple one on here that the neighbor lads have not found <laughs> and then uh the pollinating uh pleasure palace here the sweet peas did not outgrow the squash they're just starting to come up and do a little flowering now so but we do have some spaghetti squash pretty pumped about <clears throat> Oh, there you go. You get some hail damage on there. <laughs> oh, these are some of our favorites. I think I got four in here. There's two there. Another one hanging down there. And then 
one there. Hey boys, how's it going? Good. Good. Want to pick some potatoes some, a little later? Yeah. We watched the we watched the old video when we were picking potatoes. Oh, from last year. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. All right, we'll do another one. I'll give you guys a hauler when we're ready. All right, and here was uh, the onions that I saved from last year. So I think there was four whites, a um, couple of yellows, <coughs> and a red. And then in the back, I saved the four biggest shallots that I have. And uh, if I can figure out how to post it, I'll show, uh, I'll show a link to either that harvest or when I had just put them in some, uh, in some soil to get them started at the beginning of the year. I cannot wait to rip those out and see, see what's going on in there. And then uh, there was irises here and here. I gave this bunch to the neighbor and she divided them up. And then this one here, we divided up and put down the, uh, down the path to the driveway. This is the only bean plant, Scarlet Runner, that did worth anything. And there's one, two. And I planted them about every four inches in there. So it was just not a bean year. Here's the Purple Mountain Orc spinach. Seeds are drying off just wonderfully. And uh, yeah, if anybody's interested in these seeds, by all means, these things are awesome plants. I can have a bunch of these up front for color. I mean, and they're edible and they're super drought tolerant. The old, uh, the old potato uh, single stemming. I don't know. I, I see and I can get why guys do it in greenhouses where it's a super stable environment, no wind, harsh rains. But uh, when we got that hail, it set everything so far back and I can't help but thinking if I had uh, if I had some secondary stems or runners that had been developed that uh, it would have bounced back a little quicker but uh, whatever I mean we have so few tomatoes this year that basically none of these are even making them inside now let's just pick them and munch on them out here but they're trying you know it's just what is it today the 10th yesterday was our first frost date so I'll let that sink in right I mean, I appreciate the effort there, gentlemen, or ladies. Nice trusses. Oh, well, we'll give her a heck again next year, see how it goes. I'm used to having 200 pounds of uh, tomatoes in the freezer every year. Should, do, should be doing some pasto or something with all this basil, at least drying it out. I'm not going to let that go to waste for sure. Uh, Herb Garden's done fantastic. I've been, oh man, I have so much parsley. I've been drying thyme, I've been drying oregano, lavender, Lemon balm out the wazoo. All of this is going to get cut and hung to dry all the sage. Oh, exciting. I'm going to be putting, um, I'm going to be altering these, uh, these hoop houses. I saw a really cool design on it. I'm going to do a, it's a double layered. So it acts like a thermos, right? So you've got that insulating layer in between. And uh, I'm going to hinge it so that it comes up like this. I can take it all down in the spring. So Whatever, we're going to try and get ready. This is uh, the original lettuce bed, which seems to have bounced back nicely after I you know, I've popped a bunch of, obviously, beets in there and a bunch of other lettuce that I started. So our lettuce uh, situation should be okay until those cold frames up front start rocking, dehydrate and all of that. So it's just very odd to be able to look over into the neighbor's yard at this time of year. Like, normally, everything is like that one bed with the Scarlet Runner. Like, you can barely see through. It's so cool. But... Uh, I guess the only other thing is uh, every year I have a volunteer something outside of my uh, compost uh, pile area. I mean, last year I had so many sunflowers that this was like, what was it, the legend of Sleepy Hollow where he's got to ride through those trees? Like, it was just crazy. And this year, apparently a pumpkin. Now, I've never seen this kind of a decorative pumpkin before. I've never grown it. So I don't know how the seeds got here, but this is a white pumpkin. I, I don't get it. I really, I really don't get it. <laughs> Good morning, Coolio. So, anywho, I mean, this has got powdery mildew all over it, so that'll be going in the garbage, not the compost. But uh, anyway, there's just a, uh, a quick little uh, backyard update. You haven't seen one in a couple of months. I'm going to get cracking on this uh, cold frame so I can get cracking on the hoop houses. Thanks for checking it out, guys. Uh, oh, and you'll probably see the potato reveal later. <laughs> Bye.